Hi, I'm Alex and this is Pucks and Paperbacks. Today, as you're watching this, is my 28th birthday, so I decided to read some of my childhood books. Some of them were favorites, some I just found in pictures. I have done this once before and so I'll have that video linked down below and I have a series on Patreon consisting of three videos where I read my childhood required reads including Loser by Jerry Spinelli, Define Normal by Julie Ann Peters which happens to be one of my favorite childhood books and Ever Lost by Neil Schusterman so you can become a patron to go and watch that. Before this video gets started I want to set some boundaries because I am trans and I'm going to be sharing some childhood photos in this video. I would appreciate if you are respectful of me sharing this with you and do not screenshot, do not take these photos or comment anything asking me about my childhood and being trans. This is just a video celebrating my birthday and some of my favorite books and I hope that you will be respectful in the comments. I appreciate you wishing me a happy birthday and commenting about the video but that is all that I'm asking for. I am very used to getting comments of people being surprised that I'm older than I am so if you could refrain from commenting that I would really appreciate it because I just want to share this video with you. It's one of my favorites and if you resonate with this video in any way feel free to comment below. As a trans person I choose when to show photos of me pre-transition and I would like it to stay that way. So with that out of the way I hope you enjoy this video because I really enjoyed making it and happy birthday to me! Hello, it is May 11th. You might hear Leo in the background purring and also maybe a lawnmower. I have been waiting all day to film this clip because there was so much noise outside that I physically could not film. I filmed the TikTok and you could hear it in the background. It was so loud and horrible. But I have some picture books that I want to share with you because I just read them and I had a really good time. So first I started out with Quarter Roy which was my favorite book as a kid. I had so many copies out from the library. My memory is very different on this one. I felt like it was too short. In my head I had imagined that Quarter Roy went to so many different places in the mall but he doesn't. He just goes upstairs to the mattresses and then he gets taken down and then he goes home with this little girl. So <laughs> it was cute and nostalgic and it's still my favorite but I really thought that it was longer and it's not. <laughs> my memory deceived me. Then I read It's Not Easy Being a Bunny which is another book I remember just loving and reading so many times. This is about PJ Funny Bunny and he doesn't like being a bunny so then he tries to be different animals and then he just realizes that he's a bunny all along. It was cute. I don't know why this was my favorite book. I don't know. Uh, it's fine. It doesn't have a lot. I think just from the picture books that I usually read that have more discussions these are just like eh <laughs> they're fine but I don't think I'm getting like anything out of them. Then I read D.W. Thinks Big by Mark Brown and I actually found some pictures. I'll put them up on the screen as this video goes on but I found pictures of me reading and I bought the books on eBay. So this was one that I had of my mom reading to me and so 
I read this and it's really interesting how different they are from the show because I remember the show more than the books. This is about the Reed family going to Aunt Lucy's wedding and I was so shocked that it is really different from the way the TV show does this because I was like, oh, do I really want to reread a book about the episode that I already know? What happens in this book is Arthur is going down the aisle. He's a ring bearer. DW is pissed off that she can't be one. So what happens is Arthur is walking down the aisle. He's waving to DW. He ends up losing the ring. It falls off and into a sewer and so then DW is the smallest one and she goes and finds it. But I remember in the TV show, there's an organ I think that it gets caught in. I'm, I was surprised how different this was from the TV show. So I'm curious to read some more of these books to see how they differ. I remember the Arthur books being a really big part of my literacy when I was a kid. And I was surprised that this is really different from the TV show. Like not as much, but just the ending is different. So I actually appreciated that because I went into this being like, oh, I don't want to reread the show that I already know because I know what happens in the show. But I was surprised and I actually really liked getting to see how the illustrations are done. This says 1993 it came out and I don't know when the show came out. I'll have that up on the screen. I got this on eBay and it came with stickers in it and I thought that was really cool. Arthur was my favorite as a kid. Like I said, I read a lot of the books, but I also watched the TV show a lot because I was a PBS kid and we watched PBS all the time. So I was actually really pleasantly surprised by that one. It was a fun read. Arthur's always fun to read. And to end out the video, I'm going to read two chapter books. This is Picture This, which is an adaptation of the Lizzie McGuire show. I saw a picture where I had this in my Easter basket, so I decided to pick it up. And I have Amber Brown is Not a Crayon by Paula Danzinger. I really loved these books as a kid and I'm really excited to read these again because I don't have any recollection of them, but Whenever I see the cover, I know them and I'm just excited to read these. Hello, it's Sunday, May 15th. I just finished reading Amber Brown. I will discuss it in a second, but I wanted to do a little haul because every video that I do where I read childhood books, I always try a snack or something. So I've done YooHoo, I've done Gushers, I've done Dunkaroos, I've done most of the popular ones. So I went over to Five Below and I picked up some childhood favorite candy and treats. So I'm gonna share what I have and then talk about Amber Brown. We have Teddy Grahams, a Wonder Ball, which I'm actually really surprised I found because I didn't think that they still existed. I have a Baby Bottle Pop and Airheads. <laughs> So this is going to be like the candy portion of the childhood book series that I've been doing for the last couple of years. So I'm going to try these at the end of this video, but let's talk all about Amber Brown is not a crayon. I just finished this up and I really enjoyed it. I am really impressed by this book because it was published in 1994, which is the year I was born. The topics are relevant and honestly, I would give this to any kid nowadays because it still holds up today. According to the cover, it says that this is the first book in the Amber Brown series. And I looked online and there's about like 12 books in the series. So this is about Amber experiencing heartbreak because her best friend, Justin, is moving away to Alabama. This book reminded me a lot of the Nickelodeon show Clarissa Explains It All because this character is messy and it just felt like I was reading from a third grader who is messy and she's not perfect. Amber Brown is an only child and a child of divorce and I was actually really surprised that that was even mentioned. Like this was just such a great book that really I didn't have any problems with at all. It was really fun and I would read the whole series because it's just fun to reread childhood series, but I'm just pleasantly surprised with this. I believe I read this in third or fourth grade, which checks out because 
this is about a third grader and Amber Brown is just such a great character. I think if you enjoyed Junie B. Jones, this is a really good step up from that because it still has a messy kid character who makes mistakes. I loved Amber's mom and there's a scene where Justin and Amber get in a fight and her mom just kind of explains why these feelings are happening and that it's okay because you're upset that your best friend is moving away. They're totally valid and so there's a point where she says, do you want to be alone? And Amber says, I'm so lucky to have a mother who doesn't act like my feelings don't count just because I'm a kid. And oh my god, this is just fabulous and it's great and I'm so glad that I read it. I think that's all I really wanted to say about it, but I really enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you've read this series. I don't have any recollection of reading the books, but whenever I see the cover I am drawn to it and I have a moment where I'm like I remember this but I don't remember the context of the book but I'm really glad that I did read it as a kid because it is fabulous and now I will read my last and final book picture this and I'm just gonna say it's by Lizzie McGuire this book came out in 2003 I'm going to eat some Teddy Grahams while I read because this was my favorite snack as a kid <music> Just finished part one of Picture This and I wanted to just update. I've been watching the Lizzie McGuire show as I read. So this was the Picture Day episode where her parents make her wear a unicorn sweater and she doesn't want to so she spends like the whole day at school trying to find an outfit. It was really funny and I was really interested to see how this was going to work out in terms of novelization. The dialogue is almost word for word except for like just a few instances where the words just changed but it was actually fun to read the book while I'm watching because it went a little bit faster but also it was just fun to read. <laughs> I figured it was going to be like this because I watched Gavin's video where he read all the Hannah Montanas so I had a feeling that this was going to be similar. We used to have a high school musical book too. We did yard sales in the past so I've never actually like collected them. We actually might still have some but I have no idea where they would be. But Anyway, I just wanted to update because now I'm going on to part two and I don't even know what part two is. It doesn't even tell me. I thought this was just all about picture day, but I'll read that and then I'll let you know. Hello, I just finished reading the whole entire book and I ended up finding the episode that the second story was about and I was able to watch it. So that was fun. This was about Lizzie, Gordo, and Miranda going to the mall and Miranda is accused of stealing a lipstick and uh basically and basically Lizzie is a narc and she doesn't believe Miranda. She believes a security guard instead and Miranda is taken away by security and then Lizzie finds out towards the end by her brother that she should always believe her friends and it was interesting. I just have been watching these and I just love Gordo. He is so chill and I relate to him so much because he's just like, hey, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> and he just has some good one-liners and he's awesome and it just, it still holds up. But I didn't know that Lizzie was this much of an arc. And there's also a plot point where her brother Matt does his own talk show and basically live streams it and his dad gets involved and it was so funny because he was basically clout chasing. There's an aspect where you can see the map around the world of like who is tuning in and it is just turning green all the time as him and his dad like do these like wacky shenanigans and so he is clout chasing 
and it was just so funny. The channel fan, not like Disney as a whole. I don't watch Disney movies or anything like that. I'm just not interested in it. But I really have fond memories of watching Lizzie McGuire and my favorite character was Gordo. My favorite episode has to be the Nancy Drew one and I don't even know if it's Nancy Drew. It was just like an episode where there was like a mystery. There's also the one where they find kittens in their deck. I really enjoyed that one. It's funny how I have a really good memory for those type of things but for other things in my childhood I could not even tell you. The way my school was set up is you attended from first to eighth grade so I didn't have a separation from elementary and middle school. I just was in the same school from first to eighth grade. So when I was reading this, it was probably around middle school. Overall, this was a really fun experience to read this book and be able to watch along with the TV show. I am going to finish up watching some playoff hockey right now. And then tomorrow I will wrap up the video by trying some more of my childhood snacks. I did eat some Teddy Grahams and they were awesome. They just held up very well, but I'm going to go watch the rest of the playoffs and I will see you tomorrow. Hello, let's finish this video up by trying some candy. <laughs> Feeling some chocolate, so I want to go with the Wonder Ball. I was really surprised that I even found this and that it still existed, but this is a Mario one or Super Mario and I'm excited. Okay, so you collect like these coins. Um, okay, cool. It's Wario. Nice. This is actually like pretty heavy. I like this and you can collect them all. And now the Wonder Ball. So it's just this chocolate ball and it has things in it. So apparently it has like some candies that are Mario themed. So I, I guess you just bite into it. I guess so. Hmm. Okay. I mean, these little blue Mario things. The chocolate's not very sturdy unless it's just like melting, but it's like just falling apart. The candy was kind of like a smarty flavor and the chocolate was just milk chocolate. It's pretty good. It's fine. <laughs> Moving on to airheads. I love how I just got all candy that's going to just break my teeth. But airheads are my favorite and I haven't had them in so long. Ooh, we've got watermelon, cherry, I used to get these in school all the time. Oh, there's a mystery flavor. Oh yeah, we have to try the mystery flavor. Um, and then there's a citrus rush. Try saying that. And then blue raspberry. And this one feels like something happened to it. <laughs> Let's try the mystery flavor first. Oh. Here it is. flavor this is but it's good <laughs> it tastes like citrus so it might be like a citrusy flavor but I tried to look at the nutrients and ingredients and it doesn't tell me so it truly is a mystery and now watermelon oh my god look at that color Airheads are just great and I'm very happy that I got them. For the last and final one, a baby bottle pop, which oh my god, I probably haven't had since like 2002 or something like that. 
it's been a long time and I really can't believe that I found I can't even actually believe that these still exist this is strawberry I used to get these oh no ring pops I think I think ring pops I used to get at like this like skating place that I always used to go to like roller skating not ice skating I don't know how to ice skate I'm like the worst hockey fan ever okay here we are I'm terrified to do this because it just this is probably gonna be gross oh my god you can like barely get it all on oh maybe do this uh <laughs> like it kind of worked what I think I would just rather have a ring pop. Wow. I'm really disappointed. It makes sense why I liked it as a kid, but I don't know if I would ever have it as an adult. <laughs> so that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe because it's my birthday and I would really appreciate if you did that. Thank you for watching. I will see you next week with an announcement and a book recommendations video. Bye.